Hi there, my name is Scott Phillips. I'm the president and CEO of Starfish Medical. We're coming up on our 20th anniversary in a couple of months. We're very excited about that. One of the areas we're really focused on this year is regenerative medicine, things like cell therapies and tissue engineering. When you think about those areas, you don't often think about medical devices, but in fact, this area is burgeoning. It's gonna be huge. We've been working in it for 10 years. This year, we're doubling down with laboratory infrastructure, deeper partnerships with universities. We're very excited about the potential of medical devices that will be required when you do things like dosing or things like near patient processing, all sorts of aspects that will require our expertise. One of the interesting institutions we work with is the University of Victoria, and in particular, the Willerth Lab, which is headed by Dr. Stephanie Willerth. My name is Dr. Stephanie Willerth, and I'm the Acting Director of the Biomedical Engineering Program at the University of Victoria, where I also am a Canada Research Chair in Biomedical Engineering and an Associate Professor. I work together with Starfish on many exciting projects in the area of regenerative medicine, particularly in the area of stem cell bioengineering. The field of regenerative medicine holds tremendous potential to treat lots of different diseases and disorders that affect our community today. Here in British Columbia, it's a particularly exciting time for regenerative medicine as we have two first-in-class uh, clinical trials going on involving novel stem cell therapies, including a CAR-T stem cell therapy being tested here in Victoria, as well as a diabetes clinical trial using human pluripotent stem cells based at the University of British Columbia. Together with Starfish Medical, we've collaborated on many different projects in the area of regenerative medicine. Uh, we work closely and they in fact use some of our facilities at the University of Victoria in my research lab to develop different types of cellular therapies to treat different types of disorders. My name's Brian Hanran. I'm the Biotech Program Director here at Starfish Medical. I joined about six months ago and very excited to be uh, part of the company. My background is in biochemistry and uh, I've been involved in product development both in diagnostics and the cell therapy and regenerative medicine space for almost 20 years. And it's an exciting time to, to join and it's an exciting time for the regenerative medicine industry. The regenerative medicine field is very broad, so it's not just cell and gene therapies, but also tissue engineering. And the key element of all of these products is living cells and how we handle those. The industry has evolved uh, rather rapidly over the last five years. And I think the challenges um, have been more around, you know, how do these therapies work and the understanding the mechanisms of action? And then how do we make enough of these cells to have a product? And so medical devices have not been really a, I guess, front and centre in, uh, in the industry. Um, and it's now only sort of coming into, into focus as we uh, solve those other more difficult problems. So you know, there's now many opportunities, I think, in this industry for medical device applications. And one of the key elements of that is, as I indicated, uh, handling live cells, which very contrast to chemicals and normal drug products where you can you know, absolutely characterise those products and know how they are handled or changed if they're manipulated in some way. Um, whereas with cells, we, we have to handle them very carefully and we really only get one shot at it, particularly if it's an autologous therapy where most of your cells have been used to create a dose and so we can't afford to make a mistake in delivering that product. In one example of a regenerative medicine project that we worked on, um, we identified a handful of key elements and those included chemical compatibility between the device materials and the holding medium and the cells themselves, as well as the patient's tissue. Uh, we looked at agglomeration and considerations for cell bunching, how to identify appropriately diameter tubing uh, so that the cells didn't bunch up. And then uh, we also looked at sterilization uh, compatibility and being able to build the device and supply it sterile to the user. And so in that project, uh, we vetted all of those things through verification and validation testing, sterilization validation, biocompatibility testing. And the project culminated uh, in a successful master file uh, submission through the FDA, as well as the client's um, investigational new drug trial approval. And uh, to support that, we produced several hundred uh, sterile, single-use cannula 
devices um, in our clean room facility and ship them out to the client for preclinical and clinical testing. Another element that is probably a little ways off and it's uh, an area called near patient processing. Now this has been used for some stem cell therapies at the moment where there is minimal manipulation of the product. So it's the very initial regenerative medicine products where uh, stem cells are collected from somewhere, it could be adipose tissue, uh, could be uh, bone marrow, and then these cells are not fully purified, but purified to an extent and uh, injected back into the patient. So that, you know, is a very simple process. At the other end, we have very complex manufacturing processes where uh, cells are collected from the patient, but the manufacturing process to convert that into a product might take several weeks. At the end of that time, the product is cryopreserved and then is returned back to the administration facility and, the, and administered to the, plate, to the patient. And so the, all those complex steps um, require us to manage cell losses. And the same applies when we get to the point of administration, because at that point, um, again, we're having to, you know, be very careful about how those cells are, are delivered to the patient. And sometimes efficacy is going to be impacted by getting the right number of cells in the right place. And so that's really the opportunity or the challenge for medical device developers is to find the solutions and develop solutions in that space. One of the devices that we recently worked on was for a stem cell delivery system. The application was in the neurological field and we engaged with uh, neurologist great A-type personalities to figure out what some of the associated risks and workflows associated with the device's eventual use would be. As part of that process uh, for initial design, we found that patients often move when they're under anesthesia and that had a great influence associated with how our design was intended to be completed. It was a great finding that led to a successful product.